everybody. Welcome to the Art of Comics. This is your host, me, Andre Salazar, and I am super stoked to talk to y'all about Frank Miller, Ronin, the Gallery Edition book, This Beast. I'm going to be breaking this book down. This is a spoiler alert. We're going to spoil this whole stinking book, the story, the art, everything. We're going to go through this page by page. It's going to take a couple episodes. We're going to break it up into parts so it can be digestible. We're going to talk about this amazing book. Here is the original. Uh, this is back in the day. And now look at it. We're going to look at all the original art. This is such a great story and such a great art. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it. And I hope you guys really enjoy this. Uh, I spent a small fortune on these books, and so I've never gotten these before, and I'm really stoked to like go through it. And I'm really kind of just going through this right now with you guys for the first time. Um, a couple of things. Uh, this was done, uh, this is published by DC. This was before Dark Knight Returns. So it's like three years before Dark Knight Returns, he makes Ronin, okay? So this is after his stint at Marvel. This is after... Um, his Daredevil, his big Daredevil run, and he makes this book. He basically goes off, learns some new styles. He wants to integrate um, kind of the uh, Japanese um, kind of artwork. We're going to talk about Lone Wolf and Cub, a lot of influence on Lone Wolf and Cub. Also, he's using all the European influences. We're going to talk about Mobius. When you go through this book, when you go through this book, you're going to see... There's a lot of Mobius and there's a lot of Lone Wolf and Cub. And I see that at least. And we're going to talk about it and we're going to go through it. And this is an amazing book. I'm so excited. So without further ado in the art of comics, let's just get on it right now. Okay, here we go. Part one. Um, this book is 13 by 20 inches. He wrote, uh, drew the comic on bigger paper than usual, the 17, 11 by 17. So he's using big paper. He's going big. And that's why this is a beast. Now, this is produced by uh, Graffiti Designs, which is, um, you know, originally they kind of did t shirts, mostly kind of uh, licensed material for t shirts, right? Then they started doing these gallery editions, which are very similar, homologous to the uh, IDW books that Scott Dumnier has been doing, right? So Scott Dumnier is doing the a the IWE books. IW, no, sorry, I IDW, sorry, I've got AEW on my mind because of wrestling. IDW books has artist editions. Graffiti design has gallery editions. Same thing, guys, except not all of them, but a lot of the books with these gallery editions have the entire book. So this one has it. Dark Knight Returns has all the pages. Um, so does League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And I don't know what other ones, but some of these books have the complete story. You're not missing any of the pages. And I think that is super epic. Not that you'd want to necessarily read this, in this format, straight up, but I think it's super cool you get to, and you can. To me, that actually is a big selling point. So, um, big props to these guys for, for going into this world, because I love this book so much. I'm so glad I got it. And uh, first off, let's just talk about the end page. End page is a, uh, a little composite of two different images. You have this, again, I think it's kind of Mobius feeling uh, and then there's this image here, which is, you're going to see shades of Sin City big time. Uh, this is before Sin City, right? This is before all that. So we're going to see a lot of that kind of feel. And who cannot love the wonderful logos here? I'm super pumped by these logos. Um, I'm all about this one. And it's a crying shame that there was a lawsuit by that uh, shoe company, DC or whatever, and they cannot use that symbol anymore with the stars in DC because to me, that is my symbol. So uh, here we go. And I think I've got the camera pretty much to get the whole bit. We're gonna maybe cut off to a tiny, tiny bit, but you know, is what it is. Um, we're gonna go through this. 
I really just again okay just start off the bat this red page um I just dig it or I don't even have to talk necessarily about this but we'll just like go through it slowly just a really cool design very simple abstract you know this is um you know toothbrushes old brushes things like that that he's doing uh, with this page and now here's another great page here's another splash we haven't even gotten to the story yet but uh look at this this is a great page um again the design is really wonderful and i'd love to see um you know i love to see the actual pen line work you know he's using uh looks like a rapidograph or some sort of tech pen on these letters and that's here too i think most of this is some sort of a tech pen he could be using rapidograph Maybe a crow quill, but I would say probably not, although that maybe looks like it could be crow quill. So he might do that, and then these big blocks of black. Uh, again, this reminds me a lot of that early Sin City stuff. This table of contents page, this double spread is a page in the story. Uh, we're going to get to that for sure. And uh, here we get, so it's a six part story. This has the whole stinking thing. This was colored by Lynn Varley, his ex-wife, at the time his wife. And um, so we're gonna just jam on through this. And uh, here we go. A little introduction by Dave Gibbons. You know, Dave Gibbons, he worked with, he did a, uh, he did a mini series called uh, Martha Washington Goes to, excuse me, Martha Goes to Washington, is that it? Comment, comment below on what that is. I think it was Marsha Goes to Washington. There was like a couple of different ones. I think it was a sequel. Uh, Marsha Goes to War or something. Or Martha Washington Goes to War. Comment below on that. Give me a little comment on that. I'm not sure on that one. I'm not going to go look it up. Okay. Book one. Um, actually says not scanned from the original art. So this one's not from the actual art. Let me move this up just slightly. Bit like that. There we go. Um, but I love his cross hatching here um you know there is no line straight line that's giving any kind of outline it's all sketch it's all cross hatched and um we're gonna see a lot of this kind of stuff that he's doing you know i'm assuming um he probably penciled all this down of course first and then went into it okay page one here we go how we do on the camera yeah we see pretty good Okay, uh, so it starts off the story. I'll spoil a little bit of the story as we go. Um, it starts off in this feudal Japan era. We've got a old master and his young um, samurai in the cemetery. Uh, he's going here. He goes often to uh, visit the spirits and his ancestors. Um, we see this is, it's, it's kind of interesting how this is really yellowed out here. And it looks like, and a lot of this, you can see, um, I'm hoping the camera picks this up, but you can see that a lot of this has been cut out. So these are panels. This panel and this panel come from another page. And he's gluing them on here. And then you can tell he's also using whiteout. He's using whiteout on the borders to get the borders a little scratchy. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. So I'm not in it. We're going to, let's go to the next page. He does, we see this a lot. So these opening sequence here with the combat with these um, assassins that come at him. By the way, this scene here is so much like Lone Wolf and Cub, like big time. These guys with the kind of basket helmet. Um, Lone Wolf and Cub, this is like straight out from that. First thing I took away from it. All brushwork looks like, um, and this some of this action reminds me too of like Daredevil, you know, some of the Daredevil he would do. Uh, so you've got that kind of like feel to it. And he does a great job of volume, and it's because he's breaking down the shapes, kind of like a Bridgman art, breaking down the muscles and shapes of to give these values and give it kind of this blocky feel. Um, John Romita Jr. does that really well too. It gives it a good volumetric kind of look at the art. 
Um, but yeah, if you look at these panels, these panels are all cut out and they're pasted. I'm not sure if Frank kind of reorganized it and had like, you know, kind of looked to see what was going on or or why, but for some reason he did them in these strips and then he decided to paste them down on this board from DC Comics, right? 75 Rockefeller. Um, I love to know the reasoning. Again, he's using whiteout, but he's not using whiteout to, to necessarily like make the border straight, which I've seen like Bill Sienkiewicz do. He's using it to give more texture. He's using the whiteout to give it more kind of organic energy and a, uh, a rough line, which I thought that was interesting. Why not use more black uh, to do that? But yeah, so that was kind of cool. And this is all, of course, lettered on the board. You can tell he's kind of fixing up the things. This, this is some great action, um, the positioning of it. And now we're also, now he's kind of playing around with different effects though, right? So we also have this here where he's now using the splatter, uh, you know, again, toothbrush or old brushes to kind of give the ink splatter and this high contrast. But it's not black, he's using lines. You know, he's using these kind of thick lines. And honestly, when you look at this, it looks like a marker. I could be wrong though, I could be wrong. But I would say it almost looks like, it looks like a marker. Like, looks like a damn Sharpie. It can't be though, I don't know. So just because of the way the line kind of has that little, some kind of a chisel marker or something. That's my dig, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but you know, you get the you get the thing, but you don't get the, necessarily his tools. So he doesn't break it down. What they need to do is do a little commentary, right? Like in my book, uh, in Pride, Missouri, when I did the hard covers for the Kickstarter, I had freaking commentary on all pages. And I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, okay, so again, so he's he's playing around with these silhouettes with different textures, and this is all this story about his um, this young samurai and his and his lord <clears throat> goes to a party. They they defeated the assassins. I like this little backgrounds, really again evocative of these manga and Japanese artists that he's kind of like emulating. And then look at this background here too, where you have um, the background is this, <clears throat> this kind of squiggles, just kind of squiggly thing like that. You don't see that, you didn't see that back then. In fact, I don't know where he would have saw this. Maybe some old like mad magazines or something. So he's really playing with different styles. About This could have been all black, but he doesn't do that, you know? He, Puts texture, it's just adding texture is what it is really. Um, oh, and I like this too. I really like the lettering in this. This is a great job of incorporating the lettering into the art, into the borders where it bleeds out. By the way, you can tell this is another one of those panels that came out from uh, another page. So I dig that a lot. I just like the way that, that kind of like comes out. Um, you know, a lot of times we just put a bubble or something like that. No, just bring it all out and just kind of break it into that panel. Works better. It looks looks like it's part of the art. Um, that's masterclass stuff. So he's guarding his his lord with the uh, whore at night. But guess what? The whore is more than she seems. He is a demon. So now we get introduced to this demon guy who uh, is after this sword, this blood sword that we learned about. And so, and, and the interesting thing, these pages are really worn and they're really like um, yellowed up. It's almost like a pinkish. You know, if you see here, these are really yellowed, but this is almost like a strange kind of pinkish I thought was interesting. Um, again, staying with the style, staying with this kind of, um, hatching with no line, just kind of a hatching defining our borders of things, uh, giving some really cool volume. And uh, this is interesting, this here is cut out too. So this was like a paste up 
from some other page he did. Yeah, I would love to see how he kind of composited, you know, um, that's some things that I'm doing. A lot of that I do digitally though. I'll scan in a bunch of different sketches and drawings and then uh, on the computer, I'll kind of composite them out. You know, I was thinking how nowadays um, we're just, you know, these artist editions are so, so fascinating to me, but I don't think we're gonna be getting much of this in the, in the future because so many artists are now digital. People don't, they definitely don't letter on the board. Very few do. And um, a lot of the art is digital or parts of it's digital or the, or the final effects are digital. And so um, I just don't know if, you know, of course, modern comic artists do work on paper and some you could do this with, but I think a lot you won't be able to. I think this will be for more of the old school guys. This is a great panel. We see this a lot with Miller, some of the things that he's doing. Um, we see this kind of panel a lot. In fact, that's a great one to steal. It's a good swipe panel to take and, and use. Now I'm thinking about that myself. I might have to use that for something. Um, I like that. I'm gonna take a picture of that later. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we're still in this time. He's now gonna commit, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? The suicide, Kubish? Um, I forgot, I'll remember it. Um, I forgot what it's called. He's gonna commit Harry Carey, basically. Um, Bushido, no, not Bushido, Never mind. Uh, Bushido's like the way of the sword. Uh, so he goes here, but what happens in the cemetery? He has this vision or, or somehow he's relating to the spirit and the spirit of Lord, Osaki, who's the his lord who died by the demon's hand. And so now we start getting this digitized version of things, almost like a virtual reality. Remember, this came out in the early 80s, okay? This is before virtual reality. This is like super new, cutting edge type things. And kind of we're getting into that now in this story. And... Um, Really, really neat. How now we're now we're we're kind of digitizing out into that world, and we start questioning: Is that a fantasy world? What's going on? Because now we have Billy, Billy, the psychic paraplegic character, who is somehow transferring this feudal Japan character, channeling him in his imagination, or it's some kind of a psychic link, or we're not sure what, right? Um, and now the art changes too. Um, it still has, I mean, it's not like this necessarily completely different, but we're gonna start seeing differences. And this is where I think the Mobius stuff comes in. If you go get a, things like Incal, um, uh, Adina, a number of his, his kind of sci-fi stuff, uh, you're gonna see things like this. And so this reminds me a lot of Mobius. And that's a great, man, look at that page. I mean, he's working on this side. That is really great. I really like just the great depth volume. Again, it's that Bridgman stuff where you really get to see a th a, the three-dimensionally sculpting with the hatching. Uh, and the hatching is not curved either. If you look, he's not curving that. And he's he's going down. He's not going, a lot of times you go over um, to create the volume, but he's going down and he's going, and they're straight lines. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I usually kind of put a little curve on that, on those cheeks. So, uh, this is great. So, now we have a good a good spread here. This is, is not scanned from the original page, from the original art. So, um, this what is not the original art. This is a black and white of, of the page. So there are a couple, looks like there are a couple here that are not gonna be the originals. That You got a couple clues because there's no um, little markers and we don't see any pencils or any colors or changes, so that can tell you that. But look at this great, again, looks very indie. It reminds me of, you know, alt comics from back in the day. And, um, and this is Frank Miller. Now, this, this is cool because this is, where we get into duo shade stuff. So 
here we can even see what they're using, what he's using, this duo shade. And I've never used it. Um, I think it's hard to get, and I've never played with it, but it breaks it down here on what to do, right? The two hidden, um, two hidden shades, light and dark, and then there's like some steps on what to do, right? Use the developer, tone developer, blah, blah, blah bring it up, light. Shade. So this is actually really cool, and I would love to kind of play with this. Um, but now he's using duo shade. I mean, this looks like almost like a Mobius version of Atomo's Akira, you know, Neo, Neo Tokyo or something. Uh, this big worldview, you've got these organic shapes now that seem to be kind of taking over the city uh, or, or some kind of a debris. We don't know what's going on. But if you look in here, you can see the duo shade and you can see the chemical, how it treats the paper, and it gives a couple different values, this darker and kind of a lighter uh, thing here. And so now, now we go into the story, and then this feels very Miller-y, you know, big blacks. I mean, this really, honestly, could be a black and white comic. I mean, I'm not, I'm gonna say, let's go here real quick, um, just so that we can look, because I don't, I don't wanna diminish um, Lynn's work because it is great and actually that does look pretty freaking cool but I think this is this sings I think that he spots the blacks just right and I love it when there's no detail on blacks like this it's just a black shape reminds me of kind of Alex Toth stuff so I really dig that so this is like this is freaking top notch there's no doubt I mean look at this the perspective uh, the 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 depth of this it's just freaking good now this is what the color is and i like it too i'm not going to i'm not going to trash on it i actually like her colors a lot and i like the i like the flats nowadays they'd put all these highlights and crap i'm not into that so i like this and color is important when we especially when we we're talking about the reds and the greens and the complementary you know these contrasting colors here. So it is important in the story. I mean, you got these big old things, right? Uh, I mean, look at that. I just flipped on all these major color changes. So it clearly is a part of the story, but that said, I think this works as a black and white. I think it does. So suck on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we learned a little bit about this company that's um, starting to cause some problems, right? Aquarius and uh, Billy is a part of their kind of R&D program. He's being watched because he has some uh, telekinetic abilities and these guys, these uh, investors are coming to kind of do a, do a little walkthrough pony show and one of the things they see is that Billy can use his mind to uh, move these large uh, mechanical hands and uh, machinery so he's got this um, telekinetic power to move move machinery around with his mind and so that could be really useful for a lot of things including weapons of course he is not always on board with what's going on a little bit of conflict with Vir Virgo Virgo's like the sentient AI that controls a lot of the functionality of the um, company and so uh, when he's giving problem when he's kind of being a little lippy to Virgo Virgo says let's have a look you're tired Billy very very tired why don't you go to sleep just sleep and dream you know knocks him out so if Billy is ever obstinate if he's being a little child a petulant child big bad mama the robot Virgo AI you know kind of like Hal 9000 um, puts him down we're gonna see a lot of that. We're gonna see a lot of that kind of issues. And where does he go in his dreams? Boom, now we're back to this world, right? And just the fact that these pages are so much cleaner, although, okay, maybe that's because that's not scan. I just wanted to look here. I was wondering if he was doing these. No, I can't make that assumption. I was gonna say I wonder if he did all the Japanese things, this whole sequence, a different time, and he put them together, but I don't know. Um, and are these all cut out? Yeah, that's cut out. 
that's cut out. Yeah. Certain one, these two are cut out together. So these certain ones he's cutting out. Maybe he just, maybe it's like a thicker paper. I'm just grasping at straws. Maybe it's like a thicker board. And then he just puts it on the DC page because, because it's bigger. Um, I don't know. Don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, this, this here, a lot like Lone Wolf and Cub. And if you haven't read Lone Wolf and Cub, we will go over that because that's one, that's, that's like top five of my, my comics of all time. So we're going to go through Lone Wolf and Cub. Don't know how we're going to do it, but we will do it. Um, and you know, Frank Miller did some covers of the Dark Horse, uh, collections. So there's a connection there as well. Um, I don't know why I really like that page, that, that panel right there. So we find now, sorry, now, so we find that the, the samurais whose master has been killed by the demon, he's now a ronin, a masterless or lordless uh, samurai who's wandering the countryside trying to um, get back at the demon. He's got the blood sword, which needs the life of an innocent to kill the demon. And uh, he's with this lady here who's gonna, he's gonna protect. She's a little worried that he was gonna kill her or the baby who is innocent, but he's not gonna do it. He's not gonna kill them, he's a good guy. Um, this is, yeah, this is great. So much line work. I really would like to, let me look at this real quick. Yeah, this looks like this is, this is crow quill. I would say it if I were to guess. I could be wrong. It looks like it's it looks like it's some kind of cocoa. I would not say it's brush. Some of this might be. If anybody knows, please make some comments. I'd like to hear what you think of it. I mean, this looks like brush, right? Some of the stuff, but or markers even. Um, but I don't know any markers that are really good archi archival with good archival ink, although um, there might have been some back then. You know, rapidographs wouldn't do that. and You can't get them that thick. Um, oh, that's really good. It's a little, like, standoff. Look at that. I just love these little simple lines. That's the kind of stuff I, I, I need to learn, I want to learn. It's just simple outline, simple lines to just give you a sense of what that is. Yeah. Here we go. These big monstrous panels are so hard for me to do the way he does it, and he does it beautifully. Notice this one is without the uh, border. He does it borderless. Uh, yeah, that's great too. Um, they're just hard to know, like how to com compose it, right? Because like, okay, you want to get all the information. You don't want wasted space. But that's a challenge, right? It's a challenge to position things just right to make sure it gets out. And you know things are coming out, so what's the most critical, right? Um, but this is great stuff. You, I don't think he does this style necessarily again. Um, Dark Knight Returns is very different. Sin City is much more silhouette, black, white. We don't get this heavy, heavy textured stuff. Again, I think this is his his time to do this. Um, and now we're sorry. So now we're going to the story. The Ronin is now found. Um, a gat. A gat is the demon. Um, and so now they're going to have their little battle. And now so we're adding the texture. And in the original, I think it's all red. I think these are all red pages. Yeah. Oh no, I'm wrong. Hang on. Uh, we just did that. Yeah, okay. Kind of orange. Yeah, they're all kind of orangey. We're going to see that in just a second. So, d definitely Lynn is changing the color palette per scene. That really jumps out the scene. And then here's that page that was in the beginning, too. This is beautiful. So big. Just massive. I mean, each of these pages could be a poster, you know? Like, no joke. Like, yeah, it's really brilliant. These signs right there. Um... Yeah, looking back at it, looking, you know, stepping away, just the great, just that depth, that volume, the composition, too, of that, you know, position of the hands. 
the way that it's all very volumetric. Yeah, it's great, great stuff. Really good. So he, so the only way to kill him is to have the blood um, go through or kill an innocent. Well, guess what? He's innocent, and so he kills himself to kill the demon. And that's when there's still time. One final curse. Join me, Ronan, forever. And then what's going on? Back to Billy. Billy, the sword trapped. The sword for so long. Billy trapped with the gut, hurting, hating, hurting, fighting, dying forever. Billy, you know. So is in his mind. That's what we're getting, right? That we're getting like he's. It's in his mind somehow. He's imagining it, or he's connected to the past. Um, they share the same spirit or something like that. This is a great, a great image too. So, um, yeah, this is all really neat. I keep saying that. I'll just flip a few. And now we see the demon is now somehow getting inside our world. So now the demon it got somehow got transported itself into modern world and that's going to cause some problems as you can see here and so now you have the demon fighting billy who in a way was a surrogate for the ronin and these are the billy's big um armature you know hands and so he's like, you got magic of your own, you know, the technology he's got. And he's in this, like, womb. He's in this, like, bubble, you know, of metal and machinery and circuitry to protect him. And so they're kind of, like, duking and out. Look at that. That's really neat. I just like these little, little things. We see this a lot. He does this class, these shards. He always does that. This is an interesting page, too, because it's so different. And I don't really... Now, if this is not Mobius or a European science fiction artist from heavy metal, I don't know what is. But this looks like freaking heavy metal stuff. This is so interesting because it really is this cool combination of these, these um, tech-pinned, very detailed, you know machinery although there it's organic shaped but still and then we've got this splotch i mean this looks like the yellow bastard right from sin city with the volume created by these weird i don't even know what's making this type of mark i try to decipher it it does it it must be some sort of a pin some i mean there's a brush it must be some sort of a strange brush he's using and then this looks like a either a either a flat brush or some sort of a um, marker, like a chisel tip marker. But the thing is, chisel tip markers won't make these little drippy things. So the drippy stuff makes me think it's some kind of a strange brush. You know, this stuff. So it's some kind of a weird brush. And I, I want to know what it is. Uh, because, you know, I want to know what the hell he's doing. So if you know, let me tell me what, what tool he used to do that. I don't know. I can't figure it out. And check this out. There's, uh, we saw this in the very beginning too, one of the um, opening pages. This is a, just simple, you know. Doesn't, br just bubbly, simple, gestural thing. That's it. That's all we're doing. You get it. You know what it is. It's symbolic. You know, you know what that is. You don't need the details. You don't even need to be connected. You can just have little bubbles and that works. That's balls, right? I know if I were to try that, I'd be like, oh, no, they're going to think it's lame. No, dude, that's what it is. Suck it up. You know? Yeah, I love this. This, I, I, You know, someone told me, it's like, it's art when you when you put the, the splatter. Okay? <laughs> Once you put splatter, it's art. Um, and now he explodes out of uh, Aquarius you know compound he's exploding out it's like a fireball you see him there in the shadows and this is that page before but now all kind of textured up we see it again now but he's in the world now so now he's in the modern world and he's going to try to figure this out 
And he's gonna try to get the Ronin, right? And he's there. Here's some uh, guys that work at, at the. Uh, yep. Uh oh, look who's there as well. He's not alone. The Ronin is here as well. So the Ronin's here. Billy's here, of course. The demon's here, all in the modern age. What the hell's going on? That is the first part. And it's 35 minutes. We're calling it quits. That was part one. We'll do all this whole story. I might go faster. I might go slower. I don't know. But this is a great book. I'm super stoked. Thanks for watching and listening. Um, check out my other videos. You know, Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon. I think that'll help you so you'll know when the next one is. Okay, So you can like keep it up. And I won't be hurt if you if you watch this on two times or 1.5 times. It's all good. So just check out this great art and thanks for thanks for watching.